In India, citizen band radio frequency range from 26.957 MHz to 27.83 MHz. And whose power should be limited to 4 watt? This video is not responsible if you accidentally get the frequency wrong when you build this radio and if you are facing any legal problem. This is just an educational video. This is walkie talkie. So, This transmitter can produce at least 2 watt of power which means you can communicate over longer distance approx 3 km if your antenna is tuned. To build a proper transmitter you always need to keep two things in mind how to tune the correct frequency and how far your transmitter can transmit. Now the question is, how does the transmitter actually do? This is permanent magnet and uh, this magnet has north and south poles and both poles are permanent. We cannot change the poles. But if I change the pole like this, then you can make a transmitter with this permanent magnet. How powerful your transmitter will be? That's depend on how powerful your magnetism is. Now you might be thinking, I understand how a transmitter is actually work, but uh, what about the frequency? Suppose your magnetic poles, your poles are swept very fast, that means this is high frequency. Your poles are slowly swept, that means you are in low frequency. My desired frequency is 27 megahertz, so that means I have to sweep this magnet 27,000 per second. This is not easy, so that is why this is this is this is useless. So I have to make a electronics oscillator that can produce 27 megahertz. Remember, 27 megahertz is our CB radio. This is only legal for in India. To find out the correct frequency, you need to put that formula. Here, L stand for inductor and C stand for capacitor. Either of those two must be variable to determine the correct frequency. In my case, the capacitor is variable, which vary from 1 picofarad to 40 picofarad. L is constant and its value is 100 microhenry. If I calculate the frequency of this 100 microhenry with the minimum value of capacitor, then I get 15.91 MHz frequency. On the other hand, if I calculate the maximum value of this capacitor, I get frequency from 2.51 MHz. But my target frequency is 27 MHz. So as usual, I have to change L. I have done many calculations. The correct inductor is 22 microhenry, but I don't have it. That is why I am using a straw here. Its diameter is approx 5 mm. 6 mm or 7 mm are no problem. And I am pretty sure you are afraid to making coil, right? No problem. Trust me, there is nothing to fear from the coil. You just wind it in any way. It will work properly. No problem. You only need to twist 8 times and the center tab will be right in the middle. Forget to mention I used 0.30 copper wire to do this. Now I want to make a circuit that work perfectly. And here is the coil that I made and this is my capacitor whose value is 1 picofarad to 40 picofarad. Since this is a single stage transmitter so proper selection of transistor is very important. So I am going to use this BD139 transistor here. It can handle more current meaning it will transmit over longer distance. With this few more simple components, your transmitter is ready. Anyway, instead of this capacitor, I am going to use this big variable capacitor here. Both are same. I am using this here because it will be easy to tune the frequency. After connecting the 3.7 volt battery, I hook up my oscilloscope with this uh, circuit and you can see the frequency is now approx 16 megahertz. Now if I tune the variable capacitor slowly, then you can see the frequency is slowly increasing, which means I can tune my desired frequency. Yes, you can see, I can set my desired frequency 27 megahertz. If you look carefully, then you can see my wave is not accurate sine wave because I need to make an LC filter to create a proper sine wave. Now if I touch the RF proof with this circuit, then you can see my LED light is glowing very well. That means 27 megahertz frequency is resonant. Okay, our transmitter section is ready, but what about the receiver? Well, the receiver section and transmitter section are pretty much similar. Just you have to make a voltage divider to get a listenable audio. I know guys, this is not a proper way to make a receiver, but in this way, you can still make a receiver. The advantage of this way is that you don't have to use your brain and your money too much. Now my receiver produces very little amount of sound. This is not listenable, so that is why I have to amplify this small signal. 
So for this, why I'm not using this LM386 audio amplifier IC? This IC is very good for this kind of uh, radio application. As well as you can get this audio amplifier schematic on my website. For distinct purpose, I'm going to use this telescopic antennas. This antenna is not suitable for 27 megahertz, but uh, for now, I will use it. And this is very important, use a 47 picofarad capacitor for this transmitter's antenna because this PF can block DC volt. Okay, so now I will connect the both antennas with this transmitter and receiver. After, place this antenna like this for better communication. For transmitting signal, I am going to use my function generator. Now I set my function generator on 1 kHz signal. Then I connect the 1 kHz signal with this uh, transmitter. I will use my camera microphone so you can uh, listen clearly. Okay, finally my transmitter and receiver setup is ready. So let's check this out. Can my receiver receive the signal from the transmitter? Here you can see when I tune this variable capacitor, my receiver received the correct frequency. Here I tune this transmitter. But just checking the purpose, I doing it. But in your case, you will fix the transmitter frequency to 27 MHz and tune receiver frequency to receive data. If you move this receiver antenna, you may have a problem, but it doesn't mean it will not work from a distance. On the other hand, the funny thing is when I connect this RF proof to this transmitter's antenna, then this RF proof LED is glowing when the frequency is fully resonant, otherwise not. Anyway, everything is working pretty well, but uh, this is not a practical circuit because everything is not decorated, so I will make it in a great way. I gathered all the necessary component that I required. Even I modified the coils because I needed more range. Here you can see I added an extra stitch for the antenna. This is what cover a wide range. I used 3D printed shell for this coil and even applied glue for more secure. As a result of experiment I have done so far, I will mount everything in this cover dot board. Maybe you are wondering why this crystal here. Think the experiment is still going on? Let's see how the crystal is work. It is 27 MHz crystal and after installing it, if I tune my frequency, I hope there is no significant difference. But by modification this circuit, it is possible to make a 27 MHz frequency with this crystal. Anyway, I don't need this crystal anymore. Still I can do my desired 27 MHz frequency, which is lot more stable. As well as I will make a another stretch for microphone to transmit my voice. For 11 meter wavelength, I have to make an 18 feet long antenna for better communication. This is just madness from making an 80 foot long antenna. But this is also important. That is the reason I take a 18 feet long 0.3 mm copper wire for making a spiral antenna. With that, I need 7 mm thickness pipe, so that is why I choose a straw here. To make it 2 feet long, this straw I used a 3D printed splitter. This is NRF24 transceiver module. This module produces 2.4 GHz radio frequency. I needed just this antenna from this module. And you know guys this is not usable at least for me because I am working 27 MHz frequency. So I needed just this 50 ohm PLL connector. However this time this 18 meter of copper wire should be twisted between this 2 feet of pipe. And remember, you need to leave 6 inch gap the end of the pipe to allow proper magnetic wave propagation. So here this is our final transmitter section and I have to connect this transmitter with this 50 ohms PLL connector like this. On the other hand, this is our receiver setup and this is a small speaker for produce sound and uh, I definitely I have to attach the same antenna with this receiver setup because I want to receive the same frequency from the transmitter. Now the question is, is it profitable to make? Yes, it must be correct to make it. I limit it only 1 watt of power. As a result, you can communicate it at least a 2 km range if your antenna is correct. And guys, with that this system has a problem also. Because my radio receiver is not too much perfect. When I close the transmitter, the receiver produces a lot more noise for too much gain. And if I am far from the transmitter, then the sound quality is fades. Because my receiver was not made in super HD process this technology is revolution of the radio technique but I don't use it this is the mistake of mine 